Alrighty guys, it is Qua Man here today, and I'm actually bringing you a little funny video response on a Qua Man Talks. This is more so talking about the Dragon Ball community, as I was recently just editing a big what if theory. I've probably put about 100 to 115 hours into it so far, and Geekdom messaged me with a video from Wolfpack Vegeta, who was talking about the Dragon Ball community. And to sum it up, I would like it if you guys checked out his video later on. He was talking about the fact that he feels like a lot of smaller Dragon Ball YouTubers have a very, very, very hard way of breaking into um, the Dragon Ball community. And the reason why is because with a lot of the bigger channels, if these channels already exist, what ex incentive do you really have to watch the smaller ones? You have to really stand out. And in this video today, I'm going to be giving you guys a lot of advice if you're a smaller Dragon Ball YouTuber, how to break through into the community. I'll be giving you a business perspective and I'll also be telling you near the end of the video a little bit about how I'm going to rebrand my channel uh, more for quality over quantity. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into this video. So first things first, let's talk about the business perspective. What do I mean by the business perspective? perspective well as a finance student one thing that we always study is economics and we also study like the market and, and prices and all of this type of stuff and stocks and everything and, 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 and the general concept is there's something called supply and demand and to make it easy for everybody pretty much what happens is depending on what happens to the market when you have excess supply demand goes down when you have limited supply, demand increases. And this applies 100% to the Dragon Ball community. And this applies to real life as well. If you have a fast food restaurant, right? And there's one fast food restaurant, everybody's going to eat there. If you have two or three fast food restaurants, the people are always going to eat there. So how are you going to compete with McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's? Well, it's not going to be easy. Why? Because whenever you think of fast food, I guess the big three that I've seen have always been McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. So those three are so much bigger than all the other smaller fast food restaurants, it's going to be harder to break in. But what do you do to stand out? We use Johnny Rockets as an example. For those of you who might not know, because everybody's different, I have to say it for those of you who don't know, there's a fast food restaurant called Johnny Rockets that's kind of like a 1940s, 1950s styled uh, air, uh, fast food restaurant in the sense that it plays like a lot of older music. It has like a very unique style. The waiters kind of act and talk like they're from the 50s. They, they sell like these huge uh, milkshakes. Like they literally act like it's literally a, a retroactive fast food restaurant, which makes it very, very, very unique. And the food is obviously more expensive, but Johnny Rockets has done its marketing in the good sense of standing out from the McDonald's, the Burger King, and the Wendy's because it's like a retro fast food restaurant. So if you go to Johnny Rockets, you're getting a different feel and a different style, which is why they've marketed themselves well. However, the thing with Johnny Rockets is it's obviously not as big as those big those three places I mentioned because of the fact that it's not a restaurant you're going to go to every day. You're going to go to McDonald's because it's simple, fast, and you already know what you want before you get there. So now that we have that out of the way, let's relate this to the Dragon Ball community. The bigger channels, I will admit, do have an influence over limiting the smaller channels just simply because of the fact that people will flock and find bigger channels a lot easier. However, what you can do, and I'm moving on to the advice stage, to stand out is to make videos that really make you unique. I'm not gonna compare any particular rankings of people because I don't wanna cause a rift in the Dragon Ball community, but I think Geekdom is definitely one of the best Dragon Ball YouTubers. I'm not gonna say where I rank him or anything like that, but the reason why I'm saying this is because I feel like he has knowledge of the show that really, really, really separates him from your average fan. And I think when you look at him, he makes videos that are so specific and informative and so detailed that it's 
it's very hard to do videos that he does because it's like, first of all, how do you even get the knowledge? Like, where do you even find that type of information? It's hard to even find the information to do the types of videos that he does, which is what you mentioned, Wolfpack, it, it is, a, is a great reason why he stood out and he grew fast not, not only because of the dragon ball super boom and all those things but because he was making very 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 high i guess you could say he made videos that had a lot of replay value you know and everybody benefited from the xenoverse super resurrection f boom of 2015 but i definitely think geekdom used that as a tool to also push himself and the type of videos that he did, and and, and if you look at others, I'm not gonna get into talking about everybody else. They always they have their reasons for you know YouTube and 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 how they got into stuff too. So what I'm saying here is, if Geekdom and I and Rhyme Style and all these other people have lots of videos that we haven't even touched yet that we can plan to make, you guys have it too. But the thing is, is that you have to really stand out. Frozen Particle, for example, he puts a lot of effort into editing his videos. And that's very, very, very smart for him down the road because as his channel grows, what's gonna happen is that people are going to be more attracted to his videos because he puts a lot of effort into editing his videos. And I think his editing style actually fits him. And, you know, I think what you guys can do is Put a lot of effort into making your videos very unique. What is something that a person has not seen before with Dragon Ball? Think about what you can do the most to stand out. Because if you just want to make gameplay stuff, people have rhyme style for that. If you want to think of what if scenarios, people will probably go to Geekdom or myself for that. If you want to make really in-depth informative videos, people will go to me and Geekdom for that or, or, or Black and Fist for that or Mike from Left Side Media or Josh. You see, you see that that's the problem. You got to do a video or a series that nobody has even touched on that you can easily do a lot of videos for. Super Jane is obviously doing that you know, with his with his series where he's talking about a lot of the dub changes. And that's something that will really help him stand out. And that's one thing. Hale Zeon has a very, very strong personality. And I think that's one of the reasons why people flock to his channel because he really honestly doesn't care. And after meeting Hale Zeon in person, I can attest to you that he's not that different in person than he is on YouTube. He really isn't. Like, he is the same guy. So, w what I'm saying here is... Do something to make yourself unique, which leads me into my next point of this video where I will talk about how I'm going to rebrand myself. From now on, guys, I'm going to start making more quality videos. You know, every time I upload, I want to upload a big quality video that a lot of people should see. And the reason why is because, first of all, I want to put more effort into each individual video because it gives my videos more playback and it gives people more reason to share my videos and to, to find out more about me because you see the amount of work I put into each individual video as opposed to just uploading constant filler content in between. And then, you know, if something happens in my personal life and I can't upload as often, then I upload a QA and a out of nowhere. That makes it look like, oh, so I waited like a week just for a QA. and a I don't really like that methodology of YouTube. So what I'm trying to do is every time I upload a video, I want it to be a big video. And if I do a filler video, it'll be in between big videos because big videos, in my opinion, are what really drive your YouTube channel and your growth. It's something that really opens your mind up to the, to, to the world of Dragon Ball or whatever anime you want to do. And I think that's definitely something that a lot of you can use. So definitely look forward into doing big topics. Um, Obviously... It also depends on your style too. If you just want to do gameplay, that's fine. What I suggest for a lot of smaller Dragon Ball YouTubers is don't start your channel off as a gameplay channel. Because the reason is, is because people have a quadrillion gameplay channels to do in addition to already doing regular topics. That's why for myself, like playthroughs and occasional like 
streaming, that's like a secondary thing on my channel. I already have an audience who watches me for other stuff, and if I have some spare time, I upload a little gameplay video for them, you know, that'll get, you know, people moving on, because the thing is, gameplay is not something that you're gonna grow fast on. It's just the fact, because there's so many people who do it, people don't feel like they have a reason to watch you, because there's so many million gameplay channels. So what you should do is, make your channel off of something else unique in, if, if it's Dragon Ball or another other anime and then as you get bigger squeeze in gameplay as a secondary thing kind of like what Josh from Dragon Ball Nation kind of does he squeezes that in along with his other topics and I definitely think that's something you can do to stand on the Dragon Ball community so with that said guys I hope you guys enjoyed this Quaman talks I really want to help you guys out and explain some things about the business perspective and Dragon Ball and the honest truth of the matter is just be unique but I definitely think if if a lot of us have videos on these topics that you cannot run out of Dragon Ball topics it's so big and so expansive and as a quick fact I'll add in one more thing about Dragon Ball Super you were mentioning about this wolf pack Dragon Ball Super in my opinion is actually stopping people from making topics but in the sense of the show not being complete. You see, here's the thing, guys, and I've talked to Geekdom about this. I actually have a lot of topics I want to do about Dragon Ball Super, but I can't do them because the show's ongoing. For example, I want to do a, a Who is the Real Beerus. I want to do a Who is the Real Whis. I want to do a Who is the Real Vados and Champa and Head and all these guys, but I can't do those topics because the show's going on. So what if something happens to these characters later on down the line and then it completely changes the narrative of my videos and in addition dragon ball super has kind of affected my what if scenarios because now with dragon ball super in the picture because i did all of my what if theories from you know ball to z and i even loosely correlated some events of gt even though it wasn't some people might not accept that the thing is with super now it affects the way my what ifs are and, and and Danny can't do certain videos too because it's ongoing so I don't want to hash that too much but what I'm thinking is after super is actually done I think a lot of people will have even more content to do because they're looking at the series from a broader perspective as opposed to a week by week or maybe a month by month basis of just looking at certain recent things that have gone on and I think that's very 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 interesting to point out so with everything said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little Quaman Talks. It's a lot shorter than the other ones, and please check out Wolfpack Vegeta. I'll post a link to his video in my description. So with everything else said, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys. And remember, guys, you can break into the Dragon Ball community. All you got to do is be unique and stand out.